All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Jared at 3 Cs Recreation, and I got Braxton behind the camera as always. And a lot of you folks have been asking for this video, and we're finally getting a chance to film it. This is a kickstart kit on a Beta four-stroke motorcycle. This is a 2023 Beta 390 RS, no, RR, RR model, not street legal. And this customer is heading out west in a week or two, and you will notice the shock is missing because you're also doing a lowering kit for him. So. Don't pay attention to that or the exhaust. None of that is part of this video. The only thing that I've already done is I've drained the gearbox oil and I left the drain pan here and we've already re-torqued the drain bolt. You always want to, as soon as you take that out, drain it, put it right back in and torque it. That's gotta be done first. So oil has been drained. The next step in this job um, is to drain the coolant, but let's show you real quick what came in the kit. So um, this is our kickstart lever, the internal gear, this holds the lever on with a new seal, a new tabbed washer for the clutch. We do have to put this on, and I have not done one of these yet. This is a spacer for that bushing there, or bushing for the gear. They give us a new gasket. And then also is the actual kickstart mechanism itself. And then I printed these directions off of the Beta website. So if you go to Beta USA, click on accessories, all the accessory directions are down there. And that's pretty much it, so let's get into it. All right guys, so to drain our coolant, it's this lower bolt on the water pump housing and you can kind of tell because it's got a crush washer behind it, the copper one there. And so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna crack this loose. I'm gonna get my bin ready and I kind of hold it up. We're gonna reuse this coolant. So I clean the bin out really good. I always use the same one for all my coolant jobs. So it stays nice and clean. And I'm going to unthread this all the way and get it completely out of the way. And you'll notice none of the coolant is actually draining yet. And there's that uh, crush washer on there. And I'm going to crack, keep the film down there, but I'm going to crack the coolant cap. So I just, I'm turning the coolant cap off. It's kind of a cool trick that you can kind of control when it flows out by unscrewing the cap. So right now the cap is completely off the top. And we'll drain all of the coolant out here. All right, so we went ahead and I'm going to reinstall the bottom bolt here now that the coolant's completely drained. And I just cap the coolant so nothing gets inside of it. I always like to reinstall that bolt because I keep the cover on here. I think Beta wants you to pull all three of these bolts right away and get it out of the way. But I'd rather keep this cover tight to this one, just the way I like to do it. And if you come over here, the next thing is getting this rear brake pedal out of the way. Because we've got to pull this cover straight off the side. And I already got it pretty much all of the way. Just gotta pull this pin out of the back side. It's always a fun thing to try to do. Kind of stand on your head. And then it's just um, an eight millimeter and a 14 millimeter um, wrench on the back side. And we'll get this pulled out of the way. So we're gonna do next, now that we got the brake pedal tip out of the way, is we're gonna take this whole clutch cover right off the side of the bike. So I'm always just looking for the ones that we're taking the inner clutch cover off that is. I'm looking for all the bolts that go all the way through into the actual case. I'm gonna leave this one and this one attached because that's gonna hold this clutch cover on. And I'm gonna leave this one attached because it's gonna hold the water pump cover on. I don't wanna take these covers off and risk hurting these gaskets or O-rings behind here if we don't need to. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna crack them all loose. And then I have a cool um, power tool that I'm gonna use just to, to get them off the rest of the way. And so that's what we'll do now. I think there's like 13 or 14 of these. And keep track of where they come out of because they are all different lengths, which is kind of silly, but there are two or three different lengths that you will find around this machine here. So we'll get these out now. All right, guys, we got all of our bolts out. I've got them all in a row from how they came out. The next thing is to pull this clutch cover off the side. And even though we drained the oil already, I keep the drain pan here and I just added a, an oil absorbent rag because as we pull this off, we're gonna get some dribble out the bottom here. So there's two spots that you can pry on this. There's one tab oops, right here on the side. And then there's also a tab down here that you can kind of pull on. So those are the two spots that Beta gives you to kind of help pull this off the side. Um, so what we're gonna do is just lightly give a little bit here. Oh, it's already spike's brand new, so it's really not having much issue at all. Okay, it's, I literally could have done that with my fingers. So what I try to do, and it doesn't matter because Beta gives you a new gasket, but that gasket is 100% fine. It 
you know, if the bike had like 100 hours on it and we pulled this off, half that gasket would be stuck to this cover and the other half would be stuck to the engine. So you can see how cool it is by keeping that one bolt and these two bolts on, our covers all stayed on exactly how I wanted them to. And I'll set this out of the way now. So we're getting a lot closer because this is exactly where our kickstart gear is gonna go, which is awesome. But we need to get this clutch out of the way first. So this is the new diaphragm clutch. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna crack them loose again. And then I'll use the electric gun there to get them off the rest of the way. I always like to break them loose by hand. I don't like to give them a ton of torque right off the bat. I don't think it's good for them. So pay attention to how this comes off. We're gonna, you can kind of tell on this one where the bolts are screwed in. You can see how they're worn right there. And that's important. We wanna make sure that this goes back in the same slot because this is a stepped collar. It's hard to really tell, but there's different levels there. We wanna make sure it goes back in exactly how it came out. So make good note of that and make sure you can see that. I'm just gonna start laying stuff in the cover here. And sometimes if you pull, the oil will kind of hold all these together. Because it's important when you put this back together, there's a certain orientation for these. And we just dropped something into the oil pan. Oh, just one of these. So one of our one of our round um, sliders in there just fell out, but that's okay. So all of these literally just came out in one kit. And so when I go to put them back in, I'm just gonna lay them back in. So it's super easy. I try to do it that way. And then we're gonna take our throw out bearing out and our push rod, we'll get these out of the way as well. I'm gonna pull these out. We don't need to drop those down in the oil pan. The next thing we're gonna do is get a, a punch and we gotta get this tabbed washer bent back over. So now we got our punch ready. We're gonna just hit this for a second. And it, it's kind of like, it'll move around quite a bit on you. Do this. Basically, we just need to get it far enough to get this nut off. We're not reusing this. So that should be enough for me to get on there. And I have the Beta OEM clutch basket holding tool, which I highly recommend. I have sold a couple inner clutch baskets to folks, because if you if you don't use this, it, if you use the old school style, and you clamp it on one of these on each side and it's rattling around, it'll groove this basket really bad because your air gun's rattling around. So this one keeps all keeps it from grooving. So we highly recommend this tool. And we'll just take this now. I believe this is a 27 by memory. Yep, sure is. So this is a standard thread. I'm going to hold this tool in there, and we're just going to zing this off. So that's off. You can see there's Loctite on there and we're gonna wanna reapply Loctite when we're done. I can't get the nut to come out of the end of the, there we go. So I got the nut out. Okay, so this tabbed washer, I'm gonna keep it because I wanna remember to put one back in, but this is not getting reused. They gave us one in the kit. And then at this point, I'm gonna pull this basket off as an assembly. I could pull the inner, well actually, I should take the tool out first. Um, I could pull the inner out separate, which I guess I can. Why not? We'll show you guys in case that happens to you. There's a, a thick washer in there and then just the inner basket. And then there's also a bearing on the back side that I like to make note of. So I try to get my hand back in there and pull the bearing off with it. You can see I just pushed it back in. But this bearing could come out separate and that's okay. You just got to slide it back in. It's, it's got a cage on it so little needles aren't going to fall out. but. Try to bring it out as an assembly, and then I'll just set it down here. Show this, Braxton. Show it down here a little bit. Zoom out a little bit. So I like to use, this whole time I've been using, I laid it down, and I just laid all of my work right in there. And when we're done, I'll just put it all right back up and reassemble it in here. So at this point, we can actually start installing our kit. And the first thing we do, and uh, we'll, we'll do it in more detail in a second, but we're gonna install this little paw right there. So every bike is different when you're doing these. Um, I think even the two strokes are on this side if my memory is correct. And just make sure you do this right. I've seen some videos where this has been backwards and then it blows a hole in the guy's case when the customer goes to kick it. So <laughs> make, sure, make sure you really follow the directions. This one goes in the up position like that. 
And they want us to use Loctite, so I'm gonna lock, get the Loctite on this bolt right now. Medium thread locker, not the red stuff. So we got some of this, and the bolt goes in the top hole. If I do this, and this, and reach in there a little bit better. They don't give a torque spec on this one. Ooh, this bolt's kind of gummy. There we go. Just gotta make sure it's lined up right. So I don't like to use air tools to put them back in until it's at least started to be threaded. So there's not a torque spec on this, but obviously you just don't want to kill it. Just get it in there like normal. I like to do it like four or five times so I remember that I did it right. There, nice and tight. And that Loctite will hold that in there. So now that that's installed, the next thing we're gonna work on is this brass bushing. Okay guys, the next step is this brass bushing that gets pressed onto this little uh, stub here. And Beta has a pretty cool tool they give you with the kit. You put it here, and then we're just gonna push it on, get it on there. But the first thing they want us to do in the directions is use some sandpaper on the inside of this and make sure that there's no burrs on it. Because with it being brass, we kind of only get one shot to get that on there clean. We don't want to bend this because that, that gear is going to ride on it. So they want us to use sandpaper, clean up the inside of it. And they also want us to chamfer the inside. So we're going to pick one side, this side, to be the inside. This side is going to go against the engine. Let's make sure this is cleaned up. Give it an extra second. We only get one shot at this. I can't like pry it back off later. So kind of like one and done on this one. And let's just clean it up real quick, get all the junk out of there. And let's see if I push this on there. It's still pretty darn snug, which is okay. So now, let me get it back off. We're gonna put some grease on it. They want us to put grease on the inside of it. And then I'm gonna start it there. I wanna make sure it's started straight by hand. And it seems to be. And I'll grab the tool. So I've got our tool, I'm gonna to slide it on there and Beta says just to tap this little guy into place. Let's make sure that doesn't feel super straight on there. There we go, now it's on. And we'll just kind of give it some taps. Let me move the oil pan back a little bit more. You can see we're getting really close to the end there. I'm gonna give it like one or two more. There, it's fully seated. And we'll get our tool off. <laughs> there we go. That's off now. And let's check our gear. Let's just slide it on there right away. So this is our idler gear. This is what's gonna go on there. Make sure it sits on there and it spins freely, and it does. So yay, we did a good job. And obviously we're gonna coat the inside of this with oil. Uh, but let's do the next step. All right, so here's our gear, here's our washer, and here's our snap ring. And the shoulder has to go in. And um, if I hold it like this, they, what they mean by shoulder is how it sticks out there on the back side. That's gonna go in. This is all clean oil, so let's just use this oil right here. And we're gonna slide this on there now. And I got my snap ring pliers ready, so let's push that on there. And then use these little guys. So there's a groove on that engine stub there. We're gonna slide this on. Oh, look at that. So right there, it's not caught. Let's push it in. It just snapped into place like we want it to. I always like to give it a couple extra pushes to make sure that it's down in there, but she should, she's down in her groove, we can't pull the gear off, it spins freely. So we just won, that's good. And let's move on to the next step. Okay guys, next is our whole gear assembly. It's all wrapped up in this little baggie. And let's pull this off of here. And so there's quite a bit to this, right? So first thing I like to check for, on the back side, you can see there's two dots, uh, oh right there one right there and one right there so make sure those are lined up because you want that all to be lined up on there there is a separate washer inside of there that was all together so this this next step we're going to install this into the engine and you can see this little ramp 
Yeah, it's actually going to get still. So the ramp goes here. And then when it's on, we're going to turn this spring around. It's going to slide into this little groove here in the case. So I'm going to kind of bring it in. Try not to get this little spring in the way. Don't worry about the spring yet because it's not really a part of our goal. To get on the back side. Oh, oh, so you also have to like rotate this gear. You gotta do that gear second, but the direction said to do it first. So if I, okay, so that's mated, that's happy. There we go. Okay, so part of the challenge was this gear was trying to slide in and that gear gets in the way. Sometimes I do this one first because there's more to it and that it would just be a simple slide on. And at this point, you can see our spring there and it's still in its groove on the front side down there in the shaft. We're gonna spin this around. This is your return spring. I'm gonna make sure it all stays in there. We're gonna spin it around and get it pushed right into its spot there. And at this point, just to kind of play with it, I take our kicker arm and I just slide it there. So I'm gonna like hold in on it. This is just kind of like me playing with it, making sure I'm happy with it. So returns like it should. So we're good there. And you can't wind that again. It's not worth that you can't. It just, it, it would never do it. So that's tight enough. So let's move on. All right, guys, this is pretty simple moving on from here. We're just gonna reinstall everything we took off from our clutch. So trickiest part here is getting our new idler gear to line up with the oil pump gears in the back side. So you can see this little gear is what we have to get lined up. And then this outer ring has to get lined up here. So you can't just like jam it on and force it on. We have to take our time with it. And our needle bearing had fallen out the front side. So, so that's all back together like it should be. And I'm gonna slide it in. And you just gotta go really slow with it. Try to get everything lined up. Make sure all of our gears are happy. We don't wanna hurt anybody. There we go. So I just wiggled this gear and this gear and this one and it slid in nicely. That is so important. Next step is that big thick washer. Slide that in. Then we're gonna do our inner basket. And you gotta hold the shaft still on the inside it's blind slide that on there get our new tabbed washer and this basket you can see has should have a flat spot yeah so it's got a flat spot in the one and that's where our tab is going to sit on so if you push that in there see how it has like a nice little comfortable groove to sit in if I moved it over one it wouldn't sit down in there very nice and we'll get our nut re-loctited so let me grab some more loctite here real quick this back on I just threw some loctite on the nut there Make sure it starts on straight. And we're gonna to torque this to 120 Newton meters. So, which is quite a bit, but has to be done. And so let's throw our tool back on here now. And sometimes these baskets move a little bit, so you gotta like push back up on it. There we go, get it lined back up on there. We'll get this torqued down, I'll bear it back. So let's pull our uh, hold her out and you can see my Loctite on there did a good job and I used a pair of channel locks if we just go here and we're gonna bend this tab over nicely I like to use these because they're, they're nice and long and so there's the first one now that's torqued we got our push rod we got to put in and this can only go in one way because our throw out bearing only fits on the smaller end it will not fit on the bigger end so make sure you put the bigger end in first slide that in and it kind of disappears a little bit and then we'll slide these six back in next. Now that those six are in, we can put our throw out bearing in. And my stack of clutch plates, we're just gonna put them back in uh, just as they came out. Just slide them right back in. Clutch plates are all in. Now we're gonna install our outer pressure plate because we did our throw out bearing already. I guess we could have waited on that if we really wanted to. No big deal either way. So there's that. And this is that step where I wanted you guys to keep track of where, so these are two different pieces, but I hold them together because they fit in there. And you can see the one I already used or where it came out of. Kind of hold it up together. Kind of start that bolt there. 
get some pressure on it to hold it in and do the next one and my gloves are pretty slimy at this point and that one and we'll get all six of these in and get them torqued down all right guys our clutch is all nice and tight here so we can't put our cover back on until we get our plug removed for our new shaft so if you scroll down this is our snap ring on the cover here and i'm using my left hand which is a bad idea Oh, look at that, first try. So, got that snap ring off. We'll push down on the plug and I'll show you. So, pull the plug out, ta-da. On the two strokes, this is way more of a challenge because you got a lot more going on back here with that power valve stuff. So you can't really turn it over as easy. So there's that. And what we're gonna do is I'll grease this thing up real quick. Get our seal greased up, Nero and hold it up and I'll slide this seal in from the outside just kind of press it in you can feel it bottom out and it's pretty much flush with the case at this point so just reviewing everything over here everything is off the table except our kickstart screw so we can go and put this back on so this is our water pump shaft this has to fit inside of here and I did not spin this and I did not spin that so with any luck this will just kind of slide right back in. And the only other thing on the four strokes you have to line up is just gonna be your new kickstart hole there. And the dowel pins, let's see, there's one little guy there. There's one little guy here. This gasket is still 100% okay, so we're gonna leave it alone. So I'm just gonna kind of come in with this. Kind of have to get it around this frame guard. Look, at if I can't kind of go straight in, kind of sneak it around that corner first. And we'll kind of push in on it. And so you can kind of tell that that spun just a little, little bit there because it doesn't want to doesn't want to easily go on, right? So I'm going to grab a pick tool here and maybe a pick tool with more of a 90 on it. So I kind of have to come in on this side and I have to spin this just a little bit. There's a gear in here. Okay, guys. So. What I had to do real quick was I had to pop it back off and turn that water pump gear just a little bit because when I was tightening the nut, all that was being held on and maybe it rattled this just a little, little bit. So the reason why I do it this way is because I don't want to hurt this gasket. Beta doesn't give us another water pump gasket, so I'd rather take it off one more time and make sure and rotate it a little bit. So I popped it back off and now I just test fitted it and there, now it's going on. So now it's on the way it should be. So like I said, if I would have pulled this bolt out, I could actually see that water pump and I could actually turn the plastic gear, the water pump itself, and I could line it up, but I'd rather just take it off one more time and not ruin this gasket because we don't get another one. So at this point, all we have to do is reinstall our 13 bolts that came out from the outside here. All right guys, I just went around and hand tightened all the clutch cover bolts. I appreciate you guys watching the video. At this point, it's literally just installing the kickstart lever and putting its bolt on there. So I'm not gonna film that. And then please remember to fill your bike with coolant and oil. Again, this is Jared at 3 Seas Recreation and I had Braxton behind the camera this morning. Enjoy the ride.